and how Jesus has performed a miracle showed the demonstration of how his power, not just saying things, oh, you know, it's so easy to forgive sins, but what about the guy sleeping still on the floor? You know, Paul also talks about the same thing in 1 Corinthians. He talks about brothers and sisters, I have come to you not with feeble words, but I have come to you. What I have preached, I have demonstrated. Here, also Jesus, this guy who is a paralytic guy, the roof was open and he was put down from the roof. And then people were shocked. The Pharisees said, hey, it's so easy to say, forgive your sins. But Jesus said, okay, not only that, see, I'm God, I'm going to raise him up. So he raised him up. People glorified God and they were filled with reverential fear and kept saying, we have seen a wonderful and incredible things today. That was the testimony that God has performed through Jesus. Jesus was man on earth, exercising the power of God through his spirit, drawing every day. He used to pray in the mountains, in the hills. All night he used to pray and draw the power of God. Heavens used to be opened for Jesus because being a man, he knew, he set an example that we need to pray. We need to spend time in the presence of God. And we need to be going after the things of God. And that is the example Jesus did. We also, brothers, we have the power of Jesus in us. And that power needs to be exercised. And uh, we see today uh, in Matthew chapter 12, uh, 9 to 14, Jesus, how he heals the withered hand. Matthew chapter 12, 9 to 14. Are you sick? Is anybody in your family sick? I would like them to listen to these series. You know, these are the series of signs, miracles and wonders. But I'm also praying for people who are sick. I'm also praying for people who are having infirmities for generations, impossible things. And uh, God is healing a lot of people, many people. And if you know anybody, tell them, talk to them. And, uh, you know, they may not be free. You know, they may say they are in, uh, they're working, they are in jobs or whatever. Let them take a 20 minutes, half an hour break and let them watch it on their phones. You know, phones, you can watch on the phones these days. Download the app. We have Grace TV app. Go on our website. There is a link there. They are going to the iOS and uh, Android apps, Play Store. Just download it. And you can see Grace TV wherever in the world you want to see Grace TV. There is no excuse for you for your healing to be received. There are gadgets that you can access me live on the internet, live on the satellite, live on several apps, millions of subscribers on some apps. You can get access to it and then you will receive your healing. The scripture we are looking at, you know, Jesus again, this was a, a Sabbath day. And then Jesus, always his nature was loving people, going after people. Matthew 12, you know, we see in the synagogue, there was a man whose hand was withered. And they asked, is it lawful? You know, there are people very clever and there are people very cunning in the church. They always want to find faults. And here there was a bunch uh, of uh, same kind of guys that we that are existing in the world on so many debates and panels in the uh, news panels uh, news uh, you know whatever uh, channels that they have debates and all that so how is this guy doing this how is this permissible is this lawful is this this is that you know blah 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 same things are happening even now those days they asked sabbat no you cannot do it and they were putting charges and bringing charges on Jesus. And, uh, you know, Jesus was talking to them, uh, verse 11. But Jesus said to them, What man is there among you who, if he has only one sheep and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, 
will not take hold of it and lift it out, how much more valuable then is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful and permissible to do good on the Sabbath. Verse 13, then he said to the man, reach out your hand. The man reached out and it was restored as normal and healthy as the other. Verse 14, but the Pharisees went out and conspired against him discussing how they could kill him. I just don't understand. You know, here is a God who has come and he is proving to them, I am that I am. See, I have power to heal the sickness. I have power to forgive sins. I have power to calm the storm. I have power to turn the water into wine. I have power for this crippled guy, the guy who's hands are withered see I am telling him to stretch and in front of your eyes he stretched and his hands are healed and what's happening these guys it's such a I just cannot understand they were conspiring against him making plans discussing round table conference how can we kill Jesus? How can we destroy him? That is what is happening in the churches these days. There are so many churches that are experiencing healing. I mean, there are numerable healings that are taking place. I mean, God used me to heal the cancer. God used me to uh, heal diabetic patients who doctors said cut their foot off from the top, the thigh, cut it off. They were healed. You know, the, the, the documents say that he's in coma, no hopes. In America, I mean, I've called, called over the phone. I, I messaged, I prayed. I mean, these are the documented uh, evidences of healing, AIDS, you know, people have been healed. Simple fever, headache are healed. Big so-called dangerous diseases, unknown diseases, doctors cannot find um, healing to those kind of sicknesses. People got healed. Psoriasis healed. Brothers, there are evidences. And here is a man who is God from heaven sitting in front of them. And this guy who is totally not normal, they have seen him. Okay, they, they, Jesus says, stretch out your arms, stretch out your hand. This guy was not a normal guy. His hand was withered, verse 10, you know. Withered hand. What does withered, withered means? You know, when when a leaf is withered, it just falls off the branch. It's dry. There is no hope. There is nothing existing. There is no life in that. And Jesus says, stretch out. I don't think even he could lift his hand up. Jesus says, stretch out your hand. And he stretches it out. And then here these guys are planning. In front of their eyes, they saw this greatest healing that has happened. No physician could heal this guy. Jesus healed him. And then he says, they were, the scripture says, verse 14, they were making plans to kill him. Exactly that is what history is being repeated now in the church. In the last days, signs, miracles and wonders will increase numerously. Great signs and miracles will happen. And these kind of Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes are also multiplying. The, the enemy is preparing them to kill the prophets. That's what happened in the olden times. The prophets were killed, the prophets were blamed, the prophets were ridiculed, the prophets were mocked. 
the history is being repeated brothers if you cannot see i uh, those who have eyes let them see and hear those who have ears let them hear what i'm saying history is being repeated and by the power of jesus those days in the history the power was not operating through the prophets in the old testament even in the new testaments in the in the beginning of the church there were lot great and miracles and wonders happening now it is history being repeated greater wonderful things are happening we are seeing live on tvs live on youtube live on facebook the miracle signs and wonders happening at the same time the world the pharisees the sadducees the scribes they are attacking the church saying this is fake this is not right this is we don't accept this if with when there is it is proven by the evidence even then they are saying no 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 this is not acceptable this is fake that's what we see the church is being attacked brothers and sisters no matter what the power of god is upon you and jesus is the healer he does the healing yesterday today and forever more whether it is a withered hand whether it is a dead person whether it's cancer whether it is a, a diabetes whether it is heart condition liver condition what is your condition you know god is going to condition your every problem you have a hot weather you put an ac and you condition the air when you have an instrument that can condition in the air why don't you believe in jesus that can condition your heart that can condition your kidney that can condition your liver by his power by his blood that he shed on the cross when he can condition the hand of a withered man and that man's hand got well you think your paralysis cannot be healed if you believe you will see the wonders and miracles of god you will see the power of god you will see the uh, signs and wonders happening in front of your enemies in front of these scribes that are attacking the church god is going to rise up apostles and prophets where they will do live demonstrations hands will grow legs will grow bodies will rise from the dead the the, the, the parts in the body that does not exist will be created creative miracles will happen eyes the balls eyeballs not in the eyes will be popped into the eyes these are creative miracles that are going to happen live and the person who received the healing will receive the healing and enjoy life and the people who have seen the healing will attack the man of god attack the prophet attack a miracle working person brothers people who are attacking the church people who are attacking men of god women of god i'm not cursing you but it is the principle it is the order of god because the word of god listen to me the people that are attacking the church listen to me or you whoever is listening tell tell them who are attacking the the church it is the order of god you know god takes care of his children like the apple of his eyes anybody that touches the man and a woman of god anointed who is doing a miracle sign and wonder the lord is going to fight with them will you stand god and fight god you are just going to be fighting a wall nothing is going to happen you yourself will be destroyed fighting against a wall you will be hitting the wall every time do not judge the church the pastors the men of god the anointed men of god and women of god you will be fighting against god you cannot do anything you may think you know you will shut down the ministry of this person you may think you know i will block the put blockages whatever that's what the devil thought with jesus the devil thought this guy is healing the withered raising the dead opening the eyes of the blind or oh, mute are speaking i done i cannot have this guy around me let me kill him 
he killed him on the cross. What happened? Millions of Jesuses are born all across the world. You attack one pastor, millions are going to be born. That is the power in the drop, a fraction, a little bit of iota or whatever drop of a blood of a man of God, an anointed man of God, or even if the anointed man of God sheds a drop of a tear, or if he's sad, God is going to take it personally. Don't fight, don't argue, don't attack the man of God who is in who is performing signs, miracles and wonders. You will bring curse upon yourself, upon your family. It is it is it is it is laid there. You know, I'm not saying that God will do it. The enemy will make you do it so that the curse comes upon you. So when you are attacking the man and a woman of God who is doing healings, miracles, wonders. You know, walking in the spirit, don't attack him. You will bring curse upon yourself and generations to come will be cursed. Yes, you see some of the pastor's children. Now, most of them who have spoken against men of God, the women of God, their children are not following God anymore. The churches are gone, the ministries are gone, everything is gone because the judgment, the devil has cursed them, not God. It is an automatic thing. Once you come against a man of God, that's it. You are fighting against God. Nobody has won fighting God. Okay, so brothers, if you don't understand what is happening, you know, you have a lot of things, this guy is making so much money, this much money, that much money. Forget about it. Don't you think about it. You go to that man of God. Say, man of God, you are making so much money. Pray over me. Let me also build my ministry. The man of God will pray and bless you. And you will be a greatest man of God upon the face of the earth to bless a lot of people. Yes. No. The, the men of God laid hands on me. You know, uh, the, the greatest prophet, the apostle, uh, David Hogan. David Hogan laid hands on me and prayed and I'm on fire. I'm trying to see where the dead people are and, and want to raise the dead people. Cleanse the lepers, cast the demons out. Brothers, that's the anointing that comes when the anointed men of God who are in signs, miracles and wonders, when they are there, you go and let them lay hands on them and let them pray. Your ministries also will develop. Your ministries also will grow. But don't come against men and women of God like these Pharisees and scribes who have seen life. You know, these men and women of God have life testimonies on video with documentation. I'm going to have a series with documents with, you know, different pastors of how God has healed. Even then you don't believe, I can't help you. Nobody can help you. God cannot help you. The devil will destroy you and your family. Don't come against the man of God. Your, you know, the crippled hand was stretched out. The enemy is going to bring curse upon you. Brothers and sisters, I pray that your eyes of your understanding be opened. You know, don't have malicious intent against a man of God. Don't find fault, you know, he did this, he should not have done that, he this, he that, he, you are no one, you are not God, nobody made you God, God is not retired and given you a promotion, you are not in the place of God, leave it to God, God will take care of them, like King David left Saul. Saul was anointed. Even though he was demon possessed, the law was stoned to death. The demon possessed people. David did not touch. He was so close. He could have killed Saul. He cut his clothes. He tore his clothes and took it away and woke up Saul and said, Saul, I had this chance to kill you. I did not because God anointed you. You know, 
Don't come against the men and women of God. Don't discuss, don't have meetings about how to finish off from grassroots levels. Let us make, uh, the, you know, stop these uh, churches, stop this, stop that. You cannot stop any church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That's what Jesus said. And what are you doing? You're trying to prevail against God, trying to stop churches. You're working against God, brothers. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the army, against the church of God. People are having meetings, hundreds of the pastors sitting together, trying to stop miracles and wonders and signs. People are working. People are spreading across the country, across the world. Jesus said this gospel should be preached all over the world, the ends of the earth. How is that going to happen? Through miracle signs and wonders and you are stopping it. No miracle signs and wonders are happening through your ministry. Ten people come to your church for the last 20 years and nothing is happening. You are jealous being a tool and a vessel in the hands of the devil. You are being led by the devil and then you are stopping the work of God. Gates of hell will not prevail. This is my word confirming the prophetic utterance that Jesus did those 2000 years ago. I seal it. I confirm it. And I pray and bless the church to be multiplied in the name of Jesus. No church, no evil, no demonic powers will come against the church. Stop fighting against the church. Stop fighting against the multiplication of the church, whether through radio, whether through phone, whether through satellite, whether through screens. Stop fighting it. You are fighting against God, brothers and sisters. If you are listening to this, if you know anybody that is doing that, stopping the work of God, tell them they cannot prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That's what God gave a promise. Jesus, you want your church to increase. You want your ministry to increase wherever. Go to that man of God who is being used. Tell him to pray for you. He will pray and your church, you will be blessed. You will be increased. That is what needs to happen before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every soul needs to be saved. Brothers, let me pray. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray for the pastors. I pray for the men of God. I pray for the women of God, Lord. Every evil, demonic, satanic powers that are working against the church, the, the people that are coming against the church, against the pastors, against this gospel that is being preached, I come against it in the name of the blood of Jesus. Lord, your word be fulfilled, Lord Jesus. No weapon formed against the church will ever prosper in the name of Jesus, Father God. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your protection. Lord, I pray, Lord, wherever people need their churches to grow wherever people need their congregation to grow their finances to grow their families to grow Lord I speak in the name of Jesus I release the anointing the power Lord empower them Lord remove every evil intent every demonic powers in their lives so that they experience Lord the power of yours and that they will help and be a channel and a vessel to become a channel to build the church father bless them father let signs miracles and wonders happen so that the kingdom come thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven lord use us use everybody that is listening and seeing to this video and audio father we thank you and we praise you father peace and grace be multiplied upon all those who hear this lord Thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. May God bless you. Let the revelation of the word penetrate inside you and join hands with God. And let's all work for the kingdom of God, for heaven to come on this earth through signs, miracles and wonders. Write to me. I'll pray for you. And God bless you. Have a wonderful day.